In this video, we take a look at polymorphism, what we mean by static polymorphism and dynamic polymorphism, what we mean by overloading a method, and what we mean by overriding a method. Let's go ahead and jump in. So what is polymorphism? Well, polymorphism means many shapes. Methods can take different shapes, meaning the way in which they act. Now, polymorphism is a feature of object-oriented programming, and if you do any object-oriented programming, or you have done object-oriented programming, you're definitely going to come across this term, polymorphism. It allows a method to be rewritten or redefined, and this can happen in one of two ways. The first way is a method is written more than once in the same class. The second way is a method is written in a superclass and redefined and written again in a subclass using inheritance. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the difference and tie these both to static and dynamic polymorphism. So case one, we said a method that is written more than once in the same class. This is what is known as overloading a method. Overloading a method means there are methods with the same name but different signatures. Now, when we talk about signatures, the signatures are the amount of parameters being accepted by the method when it is called. Now, the computer knows as soon as the program is compiled, what methods will be called because of the signature. Because it knows as soon as it is compiled, it is called static polymorphism. Let's switch over to code and take a look at this. Here I have a class called Hello World. This illustrates static polymorphism, which means we are overloading a method. That means we have the same method name, but a different signature. Let's take a look at this first method, hello. There is no signature here. There are no parameters that it is accepting, and it outputs hello world to you. Let's take a look at the second hello method, the same name, but a different signature. That is because it accepts in as a string. Let's take a look at how this runs. Down here in my main sub, I have this example one as a, my object. This object calls the hello method without a parameter. And then we call the second method, the overloaded method, hello with a parameter. Let's run this and see how this works. You can see that we first called the hello method without a signature, which just output hello world to you. Then in my next line of code, I put in a blank space. And then in my third line of code, I said, hello world to, and then the name. So here we have two methods with the same name, but a different signature. And this is static polymorphism. Now let's switch back to our notes and take a look at dynamic polymorphism. And remember, we said the second way is a method that is written in a superclass and redefined they've written again in a subclass. And this is what is known as overriding a method, which is different than overloading a method. And overriding a method involves inheritance. Now, overriding a method means there are methods with the same name and the exact same signature in the parent class and in the base class. When the program is compiled, it does not know which method to use because they have the same name, they have the same signature in more than one class. There's one in the super class, the other is gonna appear in the base class, or if you have multiple uses of inheritance, the others in the base class. Until it runs, until those objects are created, it doesn't know which method to use. It has to actually be in the process of running to know. It has to create those objects, and once those objects are created by running the code, then it will know what method to use. Because it has to run the program to know, we call this dynamic polymorphism. Let's switch over to code and take a look at an example. Here, I have my super class shape. I have perimeter and I have area, and they are protected. What that means is I can use them in more than one class. I don't have to use set and get methods. I strictly wanted to show static and dynamic polymorphism here. So this is for simplicity of code. That way it's easy to read. So here you can see I have an overridable method called show parameter, and it says the perimeter is. I have an overridable sub called show area, the area is. The reason I have this is so when I show you when it actually runs, that it's not going to pull these methods, it's going to pull a different method 
with the same signature, which illustrates dynamic polymorphism. So these are the methods that I have. They each have the same signature, no parameters being accepted. Let's take a look at our first base class. So our first base class is going to be square. It inherits my super class shape and it has side as an integer that's strictly to that class. When I instantiate my object, I'm going to take side as a parameter. So it has a signature here and then I'm going to calculate area and perimeter. Now notice that is not that is not dynamic polymorphism. Here we have public override sub show perimeter not overridable but overrides. If I take out overrides it's going to tell me that I don't have that it, that that method already appears in the super class. So I have to use public override sub show perimeter. Notice same name, same signature, the output is slightly different. The squares perimeter is perimeter. The reason I put that is to show you when the code runs that it's actually using this method in the base class, not the one in the super class. The same thing here we have show area. The squares area is. So that is why we have that with uh, in the squares. So you know that one's actually running. We did the same thing in rectangle. We inherited the shape. Length, width as integer, those are strictly to the rectangle class. We calculate the area and the perimeter. And then what we do here, we use the same method, the same signature, show area. So this appears in the super class. This also appears in the square class. It also appears in the rectangle class, just like show perimeter does, you'll notice the output is slightly different. Instead of the squares area, it is the rectangles area. Instead of the squares perimeter, it's the rectangles perimeter. The computer does not know which method to call until that object is created. So let's take a look at our code here. So here, do we want to create a square? Do we want to create a rectangle? The computer up until this object is created, it will not know which method show area to call. Once I create this as new square, it says, okay, because it's a square, we're going to call show area of the square class. We're going to call show perimeter of the square class. Same thing with rectangle. We're going to call, when we create a new rectangle, we're going to call the show area of the rectangle class. We're going to call the show perimeter of the rectangle class because this is the class it is referring to. So let's go ahead, let's run this and make sure it works. Right now, my code does not know which area, which perimeter method it needs to use because the objects have not been created. I created a square and it says, okay, now I know which one you want. You want the methods show perimeter and show area inside the square class. So here I have the squares area is 25. The squares perimeter is 20. Now I'm going to create a rectangle. When I create a rectangle, it doesn't know which one yet to use. Does it want to use the one in the rectangle class or does it want to use the one in the shape class, the super class? As soon as a rectangle is created, the program says, I know which one you want to use. So here we have the rectangles area is 20, the rectangles perimeter is 18. And that is dynamic polymorphism. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. If you have a comment, please leave it below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.